afternoon. I am Jamie Burvano and I will be doing the return demonstration of intravenous administration of cytotoxic drugs. So for the first, in doing this assessment or the return demonstration, of course, you need to assess for patients' overall condition, which include the height, weight, and the presence of dehydration, including the anxiety, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting. So it is in order to determine the appropriate dosage of the drug in order to plan for appropriate nursing management. Then the second is you need to check if there is any backflow of the blood through the IV of the patient and if the IV is free from pain or redness and swelling and the cannula is not dislodged. So it is in order to ensure that the IV line um, is patient and ready for the treatment. Uh, when it comes to planning, of course you need to check that the prescription is treated clearly and ambiguous. So if it is necessary, clarified with the prescribing doctor or physician. So, you need to observe the 10 rights patient in drug administration. Then, you need to check the doctor has reviewed the full blood document or blood count or the laboratory test including the urea, electrolytes, creatinine clearance, and so on. So, it is in order to ascertain whether the client fit for the treatment. And of course, you need to check the patient has signed the consent form including the check out that the appropriate antiemetics have been prescribed and administered. So, it is done the respect the right of the client in making appropriate decision for his health. So, after receiving extensive discussion of the treatment regimen. So you need to ensure that all the medical interventions are ordered by our attending physician and that the flow of procedure follows the instructions guidelines. So when the protocols contain the pre-medication or hydration, you need to ensure that this prescribed and given according to the protocol. And you need to ensure that all medical interventions are ordered by the attending physician and that the flow of procedure follow the institution's guidelines. And of course, you need to check whether the drugs to be administered include the vesicants or non-vesicants. So never administer a cytotoxic drug without knowing the information. It is in order to determine appropriate interventions and considerations, especially with administering vesicant drugs. So, under of this, you need to check the following, the date of administration, the name of the drugs, and infusion of fluid. And you need to observe this, 10 rights patient in drug administration. Which include also here the dosage of the drug, the prescribed volume of infusion of fluid, and the name of the patient. So, of course, after that, you need to gather all the equipment and the supplies needed for the procedure. Um, so, I have it there, so I will, I will flush the picture here. So you need these syringes, needles, personal protective equipment that I'm wearing, and gloves. So I'm not wearing mask and goggles in order to perform it well because if I wear mask, you didn't hear it clearly. And then including the anti drug, the alcohol swab, the IV polar stand, IV administration set. So um, some of them I just use an alternative um, equipment in order to perform the procedure very well. After you gather the equipment, of course, you need to go to the implementation phase. The first thing that you need in the implementation, of course, you need to wash your hands. So I, I wash my hands and I already done personal protective equipment, which is my PPE. And this is because it betters the spread of microorganisms and to protect the nurse from cytotoxin drugs. And then after that, I need to remove the chemotherapeutic drug from the bag, place in foil and container. And after that, you need to flush the IV with normal sleep. It is to protect the drug from light exposure, which may affect the fat potency. And then for the flush the IV line, you need to check the potency of the IV line in order to determine whether the vein will accommodate extra fluid flow and instant drugs. So let's proceed to the implementation phase. So before starting the IV line, or flushing the IV line with the normal saline. The first thing that you need to do, of course, you need to clean this port in a alcohol swab. You need to clean at least 15 seconds. Okay. So, go ahead and inject the normal saline. So after I set or after I close the IV line in normal saline, so the next is I'm going to place a gauze under the side of port and swab with um, alcohol swab. Okay, so I will place it here. Place the, um, the, so I just place the sterile gauze in order to avoid the contamination contamination of self from the drug and in order to reduce the number of my, um, uh, pat pathogens introduced by the needle at the time of the insertion. So after placing the gauze, I need to I need to clean again the port by the alcohol smog for at least 15 seconds again. Okay, so I'll just close it. So after that, you need to connect the syringe with the drug um, to the access port um, using the lower lock syringe. 
Okay, so we need to administer the drug into the fast running um, infusion using a steady positive technique. So in that manner, you need to prevent the leakage or separation which may occur due to the pressure during the administration, resulting in spray and contamination. So it is in order to promote continuous flow of the drug and to avoid irritation during the administration. So I will infuse again. Okay. So after that, I will clean again the port in order to be ready for the continuous infusion. So after the bolus has been administered, flush with compatible flushing solution. In order to prevent the drug interaction, to prevent leakage of the drug from the puncture site on the level of the device. So I will remove the gauze again from the side port. So after the bolus injection, the second thing is the um, continuous infusion. So there is a primary line and the secondary line. So the first thing that you need to do, of course, is you need to prepare the primary line. So after you place the port, you need to prepare for the primary line. This is the primary line. And then after that is the secondary line. Uh, always be careful when you are getting the primary line and the secondary line port. So uh, before placing it in a sterile tool again, you need to cover the port in order to maintain the sterile technique or aseptic technique as well. So I need to clean the primary line using the alcohol swab. After cleaning the primary line port, I need to insert the secondary line and remove the cover first. Okay. Oh, so after placing the secondary line, I will place it here first or I will hang it first. So I will get the cytotoxic drug. And I will place it here to this one in order to be clean. And of course, you need to clean the access side of the cytotoxic drug. I need to clean the access port of the cytotoxic drug. So at least 15 seconds again. that you've used. 
and disperse it properly. And you must clean your environment with your bond procedure. So that's all. Thank you.